What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here uh, on this beautiful Wednesday night, August 3rd, 2022, about 9.06 p.m. West Coast time, sitting out here with my beautiful co-host, Missy Mimi's. How's it going, guys? We are uh, just taking a look at all the earthquake activity ramping up around the globe right now, including a pretty good swarm of activity around the Japan area, just south of Japan, getting in on some fives and fours kicking off here within the last 20 or 30 minutes. So things very active along this area of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Also some activity really ramping up around Mauna Loa as well. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity though. Real quick on the USGS map here, you can see that activity just south of Japan here along this trench, which is called the, uh, what is that, Izu? Izu Trench. The Izu Trench. Uh, which is just north of the Mariana Trench here. It only looks like there's one earthquake, right? Until you zoom in, getting a pretty good swarm of activity, like I know, like I mentioned here, within basically the past 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes. Uh, the largest one so far, a 5.7 earthquake, right around the, uh, what is that, the Mogi? Mogi Seamount. Seamount. Uh, these are occurring at about 10 kilometers or so below the surface. It is in an area that has seen uh, past warming. This is uh, the last 30 days of 4.5 and above. Let's bring it down a little bit more. And uh, you can see it had about 28 earthquakes or so within the same area that we're looking at tonight for this warming. Uh, so there's something definitely brewing down here. Uh, as far as the largest magnitudes go, the 5.7 that we've seen about 25 minutes ago is the largest so far in this cluster of about 28 earthquakes over the past 30 days. So something brewing, not for sure if it's volcanic or not, or possibly getting ready to see a rather large earthquake along this trench region. Now the uh, Japan Trench has seen some sixes in the past uh, earlier this year. The Kurokamachaka Trench is the one I'm kind of worried about because we haven't seen too much large scale activity there, but either way, uh, anywhere anywhere along these trenches, the high slip rate accumulated uh, in a short amount of time allows for a large magnitude earthquake to happen without many, many years to pass by. So just a heads up off the coast of Japan with a uh, pretty good large earthquake swarm kicking up there in that region. The big island of Hawaii around Mauna Loa also kicking up here in earthquake territory. Look at that spread out across the crater there. Now that's a pretty well-defined signature of some unrest kicking up here. Uh, this is spread out by about six miles or so. Roughly about a mile and a half it looks like thick by six miles. That's a, that's a big swarm. It's a big swarm, but it's also volcanic in nature, no doubt. Uh, looking at 87 earthquakes at Mauna Loa within the last 24 hours. Uh, the majority of this kicking off last night. Let me see what we got for uh, the previous stage. 122 earthquakes within the last week at the Mauna Loa volcano there in Hawaii. We have not seen any notification system put out from the uh, USGS far as this earthquake activity goes. I was kind of counting on them to uh, maybe put out an update. Let us know what's going on far as the um, movement goes there at Mauna Loa. I know we get some swarms on occasion, but uh, that's quite a bit. And it's definitely noted there for, uh, kind of looks like it's trailing in a way across this region. So we've got to watch this pretty closely. Could be looking at a pretty uh, active situation there on the big island soon. Uh, with not only Kilauea erupting, but who knows, pretty soon could be Mauna Loa. Down here around Pahala, some movement as well. The Lohi Seamount seen one earthquake today south of the region the 2.0 at 8.2 kilometers uh see what else we got the bigger story i think right now is the iceland volcano activity that's kicking up here around the wreck janes area wreck janes uh a couple different ways of pronouncing that uh, i checked it up on youtube and i i, I literally came across 10 different pronunciations, pronunciations on that and i'm like okay i'm just gonna say it the way i say it so <laughs> Well, if there's like 10 and not just one specific way to say it, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> exactly. All right. So volcano activity has been increasing. I'm sure you guys have seen the YouTube videos and whatnot of the live lava fountains coming out of a fissure that's probably about 100 to 300 uh, meters lengthwise 
Um, right now, it's still sitting at the aviation color code of orange. The reason why is because this area does not see a whole lot of explosive eruptions, far as like big booms. Yeah. Uh, basically, lava you got coming out of these fissures in the ground, similar to what we've seen in Hawaii uh, a couple years back there. And it just oozes out. Uh, the latest info here, at least according to the Wikipedia article uh, on the 2022 eruption, uh, after weeks of unrest, of course, we had lots of earthquake activity there. Quite a few. It looks like over 10,000 recorded earthquakes from the end of July uh, to the uh, 3rd of August. 10,000. That's, That's quite a, a bit. <laughs> uh, including uh, two quakes over the M5.0 magnitude. Uh, so, uh, live stream from the camera at the site showed magma spewing from a narrow fissure vent. Estimated to be about 100 to 300 meters long over a lava flow from the 2021 eruption. So basically within the same area, uh, the Icelandic Meteorological uh, Meteorological Icelandic. Meteorological <laughs> Office There we go. There we go. <laughs> uh, advised people not to go near the area, right? I'm not going to even attempt, attempt that unless no. Missy Mimi's wants to. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Wow. Due to I'm the new mean. eruption uh, due to the new eruption Iceland's Department of Civil Protection and Emergency Management stated that no lives or infrastructure were currently at risk from the eruption. So, um, it looks like they are sending helicopters and whatnot, whatnot out. Uh, the eruption is not producing large plumes, though it could affect air quality and pollution in surrounding areas. So, it's a it's a tourist area. Every time they get these lava fountains flown up, we see flocks of people going to uh, to kind of video it and whatnot. I I don't blame them. I think it's kind of cool. But it's not in terms of any uh, mega eruption. This is not going to cause any type of explosive eruption in this specific area from this volcano. So just a little update on that. Um, it looks like they've narrowed the area down for, uh, where is that, Meridair? Merid uh, Meridalair. Meridalair. Okay, that sounds about right. Uh, this is the specific area where it's occurring at uh, about 1.5 miles north of the uh, whatever that area is. It is possible that pollution can be detected due to the gas release. So we see an activity definitely ramping up here, folks. Earthquake activity. Sometimes it can lead to uh, sometimes it can lead to volcanic activity. De depends on, you know, what's going on below. Uh, in this case, it was definitely volcanic. 10,000 earthquakes or so within the last uh, week or or so and uh, we'll see how long it continues I can't remember exactly how long the uh, 2021 eruption continued um, not for certain exactly but I know there was uh, quite a bit of earthquakes I remember covering this here uh, three weeks before the eruption there was more than 40,000 trimmers that's a lot but uh, either way uh, having some renewed activity in the area that's seen this uh, type of event back in 2021. Earthquake activity, I'm sure, still ongoing. Uh, latest earthquake shows a 4.3 from, uh, looks like, early, early this morning there. So, But activity definitely will be continuing. Got to watch this region over here. Look at this. Did they add a new one out here? That's a new one. So... This was at, uh, let's see, let's zoom in here a little bit and see exactly. Yeah, that's a complete new one. We Actually, they've the upgraded, they've updated the location here. The timestamps are still the same. You have it on the largest magnitude. Let's see, 0339. Newest. Newest first. Okay, that is, that's right. So that's a new one. 0351, you're right. Good eye, Missy. Um, yeah, so a lot of activity is still kicking up out here, but away from it's like it's traveling. this warming area. Yeah, and then that other one by Fukushima was earlier today. That could be a sign of maybe a mega quake brewing out here. A lot a of lot pressure of out here along the uh, trenches and the plates here along the Pacific Ring of Fire. So A lot of fives in a short period of time, for sure. All right, uh, what else we got? Earthquake activity here around the Caribbean plate, around Puerto Rico. Movement kind of kicking up today, it looks like. A little swarm of activity up here around the Puerto Rico Trench. Eight earthquakes in the three magnitude range here. Seems like we've seen quite a bit of activity uh, just today globally. 
in terms of earthquake movement. Uh, also around the Mono Passage, some, shown some movement as well. Off the coast here of Nic Nicaragua and the San Salvador area, El Salvador. Seen some fours and even a five earlier today along the Middle America Trench, the southern end. Down there about 137 kilometers deep. A lot of deeper activity kicking up there in that region. The uh, United States here, it looks like one earthquake within the last hour outside of OKC region. Uh, 1.6. Uh, aside from that, it looks like one earthquake here around the Elgin, South Carolina area, 1.8. The West Coast regions showing a little bit of activity, uh, mostly in California. We did note one earthquake out here in the Gorda Ridges. Looks like a 2.5 at uh, 10 kilometers. Not a whole lot of activity on the Cascadia subduction zone itself uh, right now. But um, still, kind of watch that. It's been building up for quite a while now. Movement throughout the eastern portion of the Sierra Nevada. Down into the Ridgecrest region, it looks like as well. We got a little bit of swarming going on independently here in the Kernville area. Or just outside of Kernville. Some very small microquakes at some very shallow depths there. So we'll watch that area. Uh, let's see what else we got down on the San Andreas Fault. I Basically right on it. Looks like maybe it was off of it just by a fraction of a hairline. Uh, seen some activity today. A 3.3 earthquake shaking things up out there in the desert uh, with some aftershock sequences as well. Just off the San Andreas Fault again. Down here on the southern segment, which extends right about here, uh, shows pretty calm conditions. Not a whole lot going on. One earthquake outside of the Salton Sea area, 1.7. Uh, let's see what else we got. Alaska's been kind of backing off here. Not a whole lot of movement. Only 35 earthquakes up and down the board here. As uh, far as 2.5 and above, only one. 2.9 outside of Anchorage. Nothing going on across the Aleutian Trench. Definitely got to watch this here in uh, Japan for sure. Uh, not a whole lot of movement across the board in Tonga or the Fiji Islands region. This is backed off pretty significantly. Uh, but do note that we did see some deep earthquake activity here over the past week. Uh, this could be contributing to the movement that we're seeing up north. One of these earthquakes, um, I believe we've seen one pretty darn deep in the area. It looks like 557, the deepest one over the last week. Got to remember the plate directions here. We'll be adding a lot of stress up here to the north. And that's kind of where we're seeing all that activity today. Not a whole lot westward. Look at that. Well, maybe a little, a little bit, bit, looks like, across the Mediterranean Sea, off the coast of Morocco as well, 4.0. A couple of small earthquakes out there around Cyprus, it looks like. Uh, but yeah, let's check out the tremor map here tonight along the Cascadia subduction zone. Looks like about 69 epicenters of tremor outside of Seattle and a little bit in southern, and northern, uh, southern Oregon and northern California. 69 epicenters, not that big of a deal whatsoever. Let's see what else we got. Earthquakes Canada. Check these guys out here. See if we got anything cooking out here. Not a whole lot. Looks like one earthquake um, within this area. Uh, what is this? La Assumption. La Assumption. La Assumption. Um, a 2.6. Not that big of a deal up there. 13 kilometers. Solar weather activity is the one that uh, we're going to have to watch here. Going to be kicking up here in terms of activity. Got uh, a couple active sunspots that will be rotating in the view. Uh, or are rotating in the view. Looks like uh, 3068 in the south southwest quadrant has been producing occasional B and uh, maybe a couple C flares as well. The largest of these was a C6.9. In the southeast quadrant, newly assigned AR-3071 has been stable. Isolated minor sea flares remain possible during the next 24 hours uh, from the sunspots. We do have a coronal hole out here. I noticed the coronal hole has disappeared once I click on it. But it is this one right here, the darker color hole on the sun. Uh, this image looks a little old. Yeah, it's from the second, so not for sure what's going on there. Um... This kind of looks like a more recent one, but when yeah. you click on it, it goes to the older data. 
Not for sure what's going on with the solar ham site, but uh, we do have some coronal holes that will be facing us directly. This thing could be growing and we'll be pouring wind, uh, wind, wind stream from the sun, some charged uh, particles towards the earth view. Uh, as far as the sunspots go, 3071 is down here. It looks like they haven't really updated too many of their images on this site. But uh, it's there. 3071 is uh, down here on the bottom. It's growing a little bit. Still not super active as I would like to see. But <coughs> we'll uh, hope for the best and see how it plays out. I think we need to check. One thing we do need to check for sure is Yellowstone. We haven't done that one today yet. Right? There, there, Let's see what we got for Yellowstone activity. It looks kind of calm. Not a whole lot going on. Yeah. Um, in fact, some of these could be signatures from the fives that are kicking up across the board yeah. in the Pacific. It looks like it. Uh, but as far as local seismic activity Pretty goes, calm. It's yeah, definitely pretty calm looking. It doesn't look too uh, doesn't look too active out here tonight in the Yellowstone region. So, but uh, I got my bets over here around the Western Pacific. Definitely looks pretty darn active. Um, we don't get a whole lot of earthquakes like that just for nothing. I mean, yeah. something's definitely brewing, uh, whether it's volcanic or not. Uh, it's hard to say at the moment. But we'll definitely keep an eye on it in this area of the Pacific Ring of Fire. It could be a could be an interesting year. So we'll see how it plays out. Exactly. All right. Uh, what else we got here? I think that's it. I think that's about it. That's about it. Um, fire activity up there. We did have quite a bit of rain over the past couple days around the McKinney Fire. So far, though, it's only at 10% containment, which I still find a little on the odd side. Yeah, they got a 10%. good downpour. Yeah, they got tremendous amounts of rain. They actually had flash flooding up there and debris flows. So, uh, I don't know. You know, it's just a little odd. I get that fires can burn, but, uh, man, I should expect a little bit more containment than that. But uh, I guess that's better than nothing as far as the uh, fire goes. Uh, the bulk of the newly reported containment is northwest of Wairika, making great progress. Rains allowed them to work much closer to the fire edges, or fire's edge. Uh, tankers have been working in the southwest side of the fire today. Should have completed line tomorrow around the spot east of Beaver Creek. So that's pretty awesome. Some good, some good news in the uh, fire containment there at the McKinney region in Northern California. So... All right, guys, stay safe out there, and we will chat at you guys very soon. Again, watch this area. I mean, it's, it's a lot. It's a yeah. lot of activity kicking up uh, in that region. So have a good night, guys. Stay cool if you can. Have a good night, guys. Stay safe out there. Peace out. Peace out.